Uh, here's our old mercury thermostat, and you can see the actual mercury bubble and the little metal prongs inside there where the bubble touches the two prongs. It brings the functions on and makes the uh, circuit, and that's how they used to work. And of course, they're outdated now because they don't want the mercury, and everything's digital these days, but I thought you might have a little look-see inside here. Here's our old uh, fan coil we're taking out of the top. It's a very old, 30 years old, probably about the same age as the packaging that we ripped out downstairs. Uh, heat strips are in it. I'm not quite sure what KW was. I didn't check. But I'm assuming it was probably the CFX15 because uh, it had two circuits running to it. Uh, so that's what we're taking out upstairs. We're going to install some new ceiling registers here. Uh, damper assemblies. Up here. Let's screw down this part first. Put our one, two, three screws into the damper assembly. Now we'll put the grill up. All right, we got our grill screwed in the three drill locations there into the sleeve. I'm right, going to put the uh, damper handle in there. Opens it up. I'll leave that one in there. There's a place to store it up there, but I'll just leave it right in there. Alright, we ran a new 18.8 wire to uh, put a new thermostat up because the other wire only had four wires. It's not possible to use that wire with the heat pump thermostat we're putting in now. So I'm going to go ahead and install the brand new thermostat. It is a Focus Pro 5000 digital non-programmable thermostat. I found these to be very reliable little stats and are very easy to change as long as you don't have a problem with the, uh, the back plate. It just clips right onto the wall. Alright. Right now we're level up the thermostat. We put our level on the leveling points with those two little rectangular areas right at the top. Hold the thermostat. Now this looks like uh, the holes from the prior thermostat will be just about right. So we'll go ahead and widen those up and put anchors in those holes. And uh, go ahead and get that mounted. All right, now that we got the screws mounted, I'll tighten this one up and then leave this one loose and adjust it to its level and tighten this one down. We're gonna strip the wire now and go ahead and connect it to the proper terminals. All right, here's our thermostat all wired in and everything. E terminal is emergency heat. That's a direct signal for emergency heat to serve as the primary source of heat. Uh, your heat pumps out, the compressor is shot. Can't really turn it on and have auxiliary heat run with the compressor because the compressor has a problem or something. That's your source of heat. Auxiliary is sort of the thermostat's way of telling the heat strips to come on. <clears throat> if it's too cold outside, if you set it up real high and you're going to need a boost of extra heat, that will come on also. will come on in the uh, defrost cycle. G is basically the fan relay that sends the power for your indoor blower motor. O slash B is a reversing valve. O is energized in cooling. B is energized in heating, as in, uh, uh, I know there's one that's energized in heating. I can't remember if it's Ream or not. Or, I know one of them is, but most of them are energized in cooling. Uh, C is common for your 24 volt signal. Y is the compressor circuit. And that'll go directly outside. It's only broken upstairs by a float control, which will turn the compressor off of uh, the coil freezes. And you have your R and RC, which is the two transformer connections. You still only need one. And in fact, they're jumpered all the time anyway. You can see the jumper right there. And very seldom do I see a two transformer system. So that's what you got for heat pump. There's ones up here for conventional, which is like gas, gas electric, but uh, not the case on this one. That's what we got. 
and all we gotta do is clip on the front. This is my favorite thing about this thermostat, the way it mounts here. We have our face plate, and uh, I just put the batteries in the back here, but you can put them into the side by pressing that top button. And you got it, and it's done. I like that. We need to set it up. Because right now it's set up, you see heat cool off, set up for gas electric. So we'll open the menu. Now I know for a fact, we are number five. We got a heat pump. That's reversing valve. Zero is cooling. One is heating, and we're cooling. This is the cycling on the heat strips, and it's already set up for what I usually leave it on anyway. Compressor cycle rate determines how frequently the compressor will react. Basically, the sensitivity of the thermostat. Twelve is manual auto sort of thermostat. You can have a manual changeover, auto changeover, or both. And that's just manual changeover. Where I'll leave it on. 14 is Fahrenheit or Celsius, and it's Fahrenheit on number zero. 15 has com compressor protection. Since we have a long lines and everything, I'll leave it at five minutes. 26 is economy or comfort on the heat strip control, and I know I want economy. This is the maximum temperature set point in heating, and I will do that at 78 because why would you want to go higher than that unless you want to just lose all your money? And for cooling, I will set it up to 68 for right now. We are done. Now we have system off, cool, heat, emergency heat, and off. And that's how you put that thermostat on. It's a good thermostat, five year warranty. Now here's our duct system we ran yesterday. It's round pipe. This is actually 12 inch because we have a couple of uh, supplier runs coming off the back of this plenum here at the front. So we didn't need to run a full 14 inch for the two ton unit. You see some of the flex runs. Excuse me. Runs up across here so we have a little bit of room to kind of move down through there, especially if they want to store anything down in that way. Hopefully they don't. There's a uh, probably overturn, we gotta replace that still. Our line set's actually going way over there and going out the side of the building. So that's one of the reasons the return isn't done yet. Return comes off this plenum right behind us here, you can barely see. It'll be installed today, hopefully. In fact, hopefully the system will get online today, but more likely tomorrow. This is our air handler. It's ARUF 1824. Basically, it stands for the Goodman's Basic uh, air handler that covers a ton and a half, two ton range. And there's your third horse blower. HKR5 is just the 5 kilowatt heat strip that's in the unit. It has to be marked for inspection purposes and electrical purposes. There's your heating schematic for the heat strips. Energy guide, they're all 100% with heat pumps. Yep. So, Goodman looks like the back of somebody's old car with the way they put all the stickers on the front. Alright, here's a little bit about the Goodman line set connection. What we have here is the uh, liquid side, return side, suction side. Inside here will be an orifice that will reduce the flow of refrigerant into the uh, excuse me, all aluminum evaporator coil. We will drop the pressure and temperature, thus having air conditioning. So first we gotta take that bad boy off. Because we have to bleed the nitrogen out of it first. Uh, I like to use flare nut wrenches because they are almost a uh, complete fit around there and have less chance of stripping and I already have them for doing flares anyway. So that's the point. You let that bleed out of there. And then we can make the brazing connections. All right, now we're gonna bend some copper to uh, hook up that suction line on the air handler. I got the benders out, uh, which I just love. But uh, let's go ahead and bend it into shape and fit it up. All right, now we're going to put the orifice in this unit. You see we've unscrewed the liquid line connection here. First thing we do, we take this orifice, which is right here, put it in. And then we have a small o-ring. See right here, it fits right inside the hole. 
Let me slide the cap back. Put this inside. Tighten her up. Alright, here's our Goodman condenser. GSZ 13024, 13 sear, two tons. And my brother's this one out there. Not running yet, they haven't wired it up yet. There she goes, and there's our slim duct all the way up. So, cutting clothes in there with the drain and everything. She ready to fire up since they wired it.